Signal R is for more than just chat applications. In our last video, we saw a standard demo for Signal R where we connect multiple clients to a chat hub so we could see just how Signal R worked and see the internals of what's going on. Now in this video, we're gonna extend that demo by adding a second hub. This one will trigger the counter on the Blazor page from our WPF project just to see how you could trigger and send other types of data besides just text. Now, if you don't know me, my name is Tim Corey and my goal is to make learning C Sharp easier. I do that by providing videos here on YouTube multiple times per week. Plus, I have a weekly podcast. I also provide courses on C Sharp, web development, and much more on imtimcorey.com. The profits from those sales are what pays for the free content here on YouTube so that everyone can have a great education in C Sharp, not just those who can afford it. Now in this video, as with most of my videos, I'm gonna create some source code. If you'd like a copy of my source code, use the link in the description. And in fact, we're gonna start with source code from last time. So when you get the source code, you get the completed source code, but if you want the starter source code for this video, go to part one and get that source code. All right, let's start off in Visual Studio. And again, this is part two. So we're starting in the middle. Don't expect to start from the beginning. If you want the beginning, go to part one. They'll make a lot more sense at that point. But what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna move beyond that idea of signal R is just for chat. We're gonna use it for actual coding things that we need. In our case, what we're gonna do is we have a counter page. And this is the, the standard uh, sample page that comes with Blazor either kind of blazer. And this has the increment counter button. We click on it and it's going to change the current count. But we're gonna do something a bit different. Instead of being on this page and clicking the button, we're gonna be on this page, but we're gonna even take this button off. That button goes away. So we will not have an increment counter button. But we're gonna use our WPF client to trigger this button. Now, why would we do this? Well, what if we wanted anybody to uh, have a vote button? Maybe we have uh, a whole bunch of WPF clients out that have a vote button. And anytime anybody says, yes, I want that, they click the vote up button and it the system will have a web page that's displayed by a are visible to all that shows how many people have voted for a given topic. That might be a use, or maybe we're gonna send other data, but this is our, our demo. So we have a counter, we're gonna change this from our clients. And the, the, the uh, Blazor server project is not going to be a client. It's just the server. It's not going to be able to trigger its own counter. Okay, so that's kind of the setup. So let's go to our hubs. We're gonna right click on hub or hub folder, right click on the folder, and we're gonna say add new class. And we're gonna call this the counter hub. And we'll say colon hub, which control dot to add the using for the Microsoft.asp.core.signalr. We're gonna have one method in here public task add to total string user we'll still pass the user in so we know who who voted for it or who anchoring the counter but int value whoops lowercase value notice that's an integer not a string and return clients dot all now i could say only a certain client but i'm not going to do that um, in this case, because of the fact that we're just gonna broadcast everybody, but not everyone's gonna listen to it. I wanna show up how to do that. In uh, a more advanced video, we might get into how do you filter out certain clients and how do you only send a certain people. But in this case, we're gonna say clients.all, send async, and we're gonna say counter increment, and the user and the value. So again, this is an integer, not a string. And this is the kind of the event that will be triggered on the client. 
Now, I did say that the um, Blazor is going to be only a server, but it has to be a listener client. And that's kind of my bad there. Um, it's a listener client, but not a sender. So it'll listen for these events, but not send out events. So let's save that. We now have our new counter hub, which means we need to go over to our, our program.cs where we map our hubs and we have map a new hub. App.map hub. And this is not chat hub, this is counter hub. And we need to give it a, a path. So we could say uh, counter hub is fine. We could call it whatever you want to call it, but we have to know what this path is in order to connect to it on our, our uh, XAML side, on our WPF side. Okay, now let's, let's go to the, uh, let's go to the counter page first, since we're already in Blazor, and we're gonna create the listener here. So it's gonna listen for those events at using microsoft.edgenetcore.signalr.client. And we're going to inject nav navigation manager, call it nav manager, and implements iAsync disposable, which a lot of this is the same from the other demo. So we have our counter and we have our code. And in our code, we're going to say private hub connection. And that's nullable. Call it hub connection. And then we're going to have a uh, protected override async. Well, let's do a override on initialize async and then come back and add the async. It's easier that way get rid of our boilerplate code. And we're gonna have that connection. So hub connection equals new hub connection. This is this hub connection builder, sorry. This is the same uh, code as what we did previously on our index page, except for this particular line. You are with URL. Nav manager dot to absolute URI. This is the difference here, slash counter hub. So we're connecting the counter hub, not to the, uh, the uh, chat hub. And with automatic reconnect and then build. So on initialize async, we're going to connect to our counter hub. And then we're gonna keep this really simple. We're not going to do a lot of crazy stuff here. We're not going to do all of the, the wrapping and the try catch and all the rest. We're going to assume that works and just get to the meat of what's different to call the counter hub versus the chat hub. So hub connection dot on. This is the, the difference here too. string int. How is it string int? Well, because we're connecting to the counter hub and that has a string and int. That's the method. So on counter incremented. I'm going to spell that correctly. Make sure you get that correct. That, that string has to correspond to this right here. We were listening for this particular event, the counter incremented. We're going to pass in the user and the value. I'll call it value because it's an integer. And we're going to have the arrow, curly braces, semicolon at the end. And inside here, we're going to say current count plus equals value. So add the value to the current count, which is going to change the current count value. And then because this can be on a different thread, we're gonna have to say invoke async state has changed. And we're gonna await the hub connection dot start async. 
So we set up our listener for that event and what it's going to do. And then we start the connection to our hub. And again, we're not wrapping this in a try catch here because of the fact that we're just doing um, a quick demo to show the differences. We're not going to try and do all the setup. And <laughs> when you do all the setup, it takes a long time. Thus, the last video being too long to be just one video. So with the start async, we're done. And then I'm going to actually come over to my index page. And again, for time's sake, just grab this right here, the dispose async, copy it. And at the bottom down here, we're going to paste it in. That way we have the, the proper dispose there for um, disposing. Also note, I am I don't have anything to enable or disable uh, or say what the connection state is. We just assume that it's, that's properly connected. Okay, that is my counter page. That's all it is. It's just going to listen for that event. Now, that event hasn't been called yet. How do we get it to be called? Well, we have to write some extra code in our WPF client, which is what's going to do the actual calling. So let's go to our WPF client. And in here, we're just going to write below where this list box is. We're going to put some more uh, text in here. So we're going to say stack panel. Orientation is horizontal and grid.row is three. So it's after we have so far. And we have the um, also the horizontal alignment. That's the things inside we center. We have a button. The name is going to be uh, open counter. So that opens a connection to the, the counter. And we're going to have the padding. Let's say it's uh, 20 and 10, I believe is what we did before. And the margin is 20. And inside here, we're going to say uh, open counter connection. That's our first button. And then we have one more button. So let's copy it and paste it afterwards. Now we have two buttons. We have to give it a different name before it shows up. Increment counter. And we should put the text in here of increment counter. So in one line, say I have an open connection and have the message. And we're just going to say open connection and then increment counter, which we're going to hard code the values going to increment the counter by. Again, try and keep this simple. So let's first open the connection. So in here, what we need to do is we need to um, open the counter connection. We already have our, our setup here. So I'm just going to copy the try catch because it is nicer to have that, but I'm going to put the message in the same message window. So it's a little bit, again, a little bit lazy just because of the fact that I have one message window that gets all the messages, but it's good enough for a demo. Wait, we have to wait a counter connection. We don't have yet. So let's set up a counter connection. Let's go back to the top. We have a hub connection here. Let's create another hub connection. Hub connection, counter connection. And then in connection, I'm going to copy this and paste it. And we're going to say counter connection. And this is the counter hub. So make sure you have counter hub there, not the, um, the other one. Now, again, we're not going to set up all of the, um, the events here for reconnecting and reconnected and closed. We're just going to assume that it's open when we say open it. So right down here, we're going to come down here and say, wait, counter connection dot start async. Done. That will open a connection to our counter, our counter hub, sorry. Come back over here to the form, double click increment counter. Inside here, let's do our, our try, with our catch exception, EX. And then again, that same, you know, throw the message, the exception on the window in case there is one. 
But then here we're going to say await counter connection dot invoke async. The method add to total. But comma, and we're going to pass in two arguments. Let's go to the next line. The first argument is going to be our WPF client, which we're ignoring even who the user is at this point. Our second argument is one. Okay. And that one right there is going to be the value we're sending in. Notice it's an integer. We're going to send that integer into the add to total, which if you go back to the counter hub, add to total takes in a user and a value. So we're going to pass in a user and a value which then gets sent to all clients who are listening to the counter increment. Cool. That's it. We're done. We've separated out now because the WPF product isn't listening for the event that's triggered the send all async. It's not listening for the counter increment on WPS side because we don't care on the WPS side what that counter increment value is. We are just saying it to the server. That's all we care about is send to the server, but see a one-way connection, send that value up to the server. And then the server sends it out to all listeners, which happens to just be the counter page. So we're going to do the start multiple here. Wait for it to start. And we have our WPF project, which by default starts in the index page. Let's go to the counter page. Notice there's no button to increment the counter. We open the counter connection, which is done. Now we increment the counter, which I have to do that in faith, but increment the counter. Nothing happens. Cool. Oh, it's, it's open, but it's not actually triggering the event. We're going to find out why in just a minute. So let's go back to our code because that should work. So what we're doing here is on the increment counter click where we are saying, hey, invoke the added total, which if we go over here, add to total, make sure we got the, the um, value is correct. So we're gonna put some breakpoints in here, see what gets triggered. So put a breakpoint in the hub and we're going to uh, put a breakpoint here just to, well, this should happen because we're hitting the click. Now, the other thing is, I do want to say here, open counter is enabled as false, just to disable the open counter once we're connected. That just visibly shows us that something happened to open the connection. So let's try this and then let's go to the counter page and let's make sure that, um, let's make sure we've actually started the connection. So on initialize async, we are listening for the counter incremented. Let's go back over here, counter incremented. Ah, here is the difference. We can actually throw the breakpoint away. So this is where strings come to bite you. And you can use, you know, have a library or something where you use uh, string constants or something else to make this easier. That'd probably be a good idea. But in my case, I just use strings which this says counter increment, and this says counter incremented. This should be increment. So if you don't have a listener, nothing happens. Let's start this again. So WPF app is here. We have this app over here. And we go to the counter page, because remember that you have to open the counter page up for the counter to be listening for that event. And let's, Zoom in a bit more on this page um, so the counter is a bit bigger. Okay, open counter connection. It grays out, means we've connected to the, the counter hub. Increment counter. See that? So now you click the button over here in the WPF app and it increments over here. If we remember, we uh, before came to this spot right here and we grabbed all of these, which is that's the um, the bin debug net six windows folder. I can copy these and then I can go over to our temp WPF. I can delete all these or just, I could overwrite them, but whatever. Paste them in. 
And now I can open up an independent WPF client. So now I have the one that's debugging from Visual Studio and an independent one I can connect as well. And I can increment from there or the other one just fine. Now, this one, the one that's independent is still doing count by one. But if I shut down all of this and I go over to my WPF client and I change the event instead of saying one, let's say three. So the one that's going to be in debug mode is going to increment by three, but I'll still use the old copy, which increments by one on the, um, on the other page on the other WPF client. So here's the new one and let's start up the old one as well. So open counter connection on both. So the bottom one's the old one. Top one's a new one, increment count on the top one, notice three, six, nine, 12. The bottom one, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we can have different clients that send different information. It's all good. Um, they both connect, they both send their information. It all works. We could even have a box on the WPF screen that was a number box. We could put whatever number we want and that would add to our counter total. So the point here is to show that we don't have to rely on signal R to just send strings. We can send other data types and have more complex interactions based upon those data types. We can even have a, a login system or something else where we send in that login information and then say, hey, only these users, only the admins can update the counter by more than one, but anybody else can update the counter by one or lots of different logic things we could do with this setup. But I want to show you the fact that you can create different types of hubs. You don't have to have both the, the listener to the event, the broadcast and the broadcaster on the same, on the same uh, application. You can have them on different applications. So in our case with the counter, the WPF client is the the client that sends the broadcast that says, here is what to add to the total. And the, the uh, blazer project is what's listening for the broadcast and says, okay, I'll add that to the total. So they can be separate. They don't have to be connected and you don't have to send in strings. You can send in other types of values and it will still work. So there's lots of, really cool stuff you can do with Blazor. I'm sorry, with Signal R <laughs> in Blazor or in WPF or other project types. You can connect with a console app. You could have apps that will open up, connect to a Signal R hub, send some information, close back down. So there's stuff like they can do that as well, or maybe they open up for a little bit, send information, listen to the responses they get, listen for a little while and then close back down. There's lots of stuff you can do with Signal R for real time communication. It's up to you how you decide what you want to do with Signal R. Just note that whenever you're using Signal R, the clients that are connected are continually connected. Now, this is a very, very low bandwidth connection. When you're not actually talking or doing anything, it does send a ping back and forth. And it's a very, very, again, just bytes of data. Um, just saying, Hey, I'm still open and making sure that connection is still open so that when it is no longer open, it knows that and tries to reconnect. But it also, um, whenever the data is being sent across, it tries to send that data in as efficient a format as possible so that we're not clogging up your network. Because again, if you're running this on your server, your network card has to be able to handle a lot of connections potentially. So just note that's the case, but again, your server should probably be able to handle 10 to 20,000 concurrent connections. So if it can't handle that many, maybe your server needs to be upgraded, but even if not, you could go to the next step, which is Azure has their own signal R service. You can offload the work onto so that you don't have to be, um, 
hosting it locally in your web server. So what the signal our service does in Azure is it hosts the server side where it listens for anybody broadcasting an event and then it sends out the broadcasts to whatever clients you want it to saying, okay, here's that message I just got. So that can really allow you to scale up how many clients you can do with signal R if you want to get to massive sizes, but for the average person, for the average company, you will not need to scale up signal R. You just, you just won't, not unless you're abusing it. So with that, what questions do you have about signal R? Now you may be saying, well, Tim, you know, I asked my question last week on part one. Yes, but I'm recording these two videos back to back. So I didn't get your question yet for, from part one. So what questions do you have? If you, you know, you had a question before that I didn't respond to, or maybe you have a new question now or new thoughts, leave them down in the comments or just what you thought of signal R and, and how it might be useful in your organization or your code. Again, don't abuse it. Not everything needs to have a constant open connection. Things can talk to the server and poll for data or, you know, connect once in a while. They don't have to always have constant connections, but for those things that really do, when you have to have the latest information, for example, if you're playing a game of checkers with someone across the internet, you need constant interaction. You can't refresh the page all the time, waiting for the next move. That's where signal would be great. You know, if you want to have a real time strategy game again, you need to have real time communication. So make the right choice of when to use signal R. It's not a for everything solution, but when you need it, it's a great solution for connecting again, using the web standard web sockets with the fallbacks. Um, if your, your device does not accept web sockets. Okay. So again, let me know down in the comments what your thoughts are on Signal R and what more you want to see, whether it's um, you know further videos, whether it's a full course on Signal R, what are your thoughts on this? And I'll try to answer as many as possible, or at least um, read them. And then if if I can, I'll work them into future content for you. Thanks for watching. And if you want the source code for this, use a link down in the description. And as always, I am Tim Corey.